All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. We have a very exciting week ahead of us. It is the final week of June, and if the stock market stays up, this will be the best six-month start to the year ever in history. So we got a lot to talk about. I got a couple of pretty pictures and all of that. But if you don't remember what happened last week, though, we gap down every single day. It was on some sort of news overseas, whether it was China data, the Bank of Japan, the ECB, the bad PMIs, the Bank of England surprise rate hike. I hope all of this sounds familiar because last week there was a lot of stuff overseas that had big effects and we finally had had our cool down before we went crazy the week ahead and now now it's the end of the month and then the end of the first half of the year so Chad we got a lot to talk about there's a lot on the table I'm gonna go over a very simple alliteration so that you could understand this week I got a couple plays for you and then we're gonna hear from Powell and a couple of other people several times this week you actually have Powell twice in the same week actually on the same day it's gonna be crazy so Chad all you gotta do is like the video I I hope I see you on stream, youtube.com slash the stock market. And just don't forget, today is Sunday, tomorrow is Monday, and this is the random account generator. So what we ask on this watch list is you post a random option trade in the comments below right now. Keep it below $100, post the strike price, expiration date, all that good stuff, and we are going to pick a random play in the morning tomorrow, and we need your help. So Chad, come on, help out, help out. It's not bad. And before we even get in any of it, what do you think? I need this for the thumbnail. I think it looks good. It's mad delayed though because it's not connected to the internet. So it's yeah, it's just for decoration. It looked cool though. What do you think? It feel like I'm I'm already I'm not supposed to get weird at the end of the video, but Chad, let's get right into it. The alliteration that you need to understand for this week. It is gonna be all about Powell, the PCE, and Putin. So Jerome Powell will be speaking on Wednesday. That's where he's gonna show up twice. There's also gonna be like three or four other Fed speakers. We saw Powell last week. He really didn't move the market. So unless he comes out swinging, it probably shouldn't be that big, but then again, it is Jerome Powell, so he's going to have a lot of importance. Besides that, the biggest set of data will be the PCE. That comes out on Friday. There is manufacturing data, real estate data, and a lot of other stuff, but if anything is going to move the bonds or move equities, it's most likely going to be the PCE. And then why I have Putin up here is because over the weekend, we had a lot of drama in Russia with the whole Wagner group and all of that back and forth, and we've already been watching commodities and grain go a little bit crazy so watch out for that and another thing on top of it is that earning season starts in a couple of weeks for the really big companies you all know about but even this week you're gonna start getting some pretty big earnings general mills nike and micron they will all report earnings this week so you could play them but also be on the lookout if they give us an update the market will respond especially if there is a big surprise that people could start to extrapolate and relate it towards the broader economy or other sympathy plays. So that's the main thing this week. It should be very simple, but now the title of the video and what we are talking about is where do we go from here after having possibly or potentially the best six months to start the year ever. So it may sound silly when I tell you the next big point moving forward, but hopefully the pretty pictures will show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. But right now for the NASDAQ 100, this is the best six months, 33 or 36% gain to start ever. No six month January to end of June has ever done this. And now the big question that's really gonna come up is where do we go from here? Because anytime you have had a large gain through the first half of the year, usually the market continues. This is a very good sign for the markets in the last like 28 times where the market was green by June and green by a large margin in the first six months. Out of 28 times, 21 times the market proceeded to go up the next six months and finish the year green. So depending on how we close this week and this month, 
month. It will be very important, but now as we wrap up two months and start looking towards the end of the year, what people are asking now, and this is where all the narratives are coming to play, is do we continue the momentum for six months? Does this positive momentum carry through as it has in history? Does Powell and the central bank continue to support it? Or does all of this get derailed and do all of the discussions about hedging towards last week? Remember, we were just hitting highs. Everybody was feeling good. And then all of a sudden, you get surprise data last week and then everyone's talking hedging. Depending on how we move forward from here, that's going to be the main narrative. Do we end this year even more green or is it green for the first half and now is it time to hedge because we give it back up and we don't carry that momentum? So there's a lot of history behind it. There's a lot more events. We're even going to get earnings. So I hope you're ready for it. But now the final key, just to give you the little cherry on top for this week, there will also be bank stress tests. Don't forget what happened last week. Not only was there a lot of data, but when Powell was speaking before Congress, there was also the vice chair of supervision, Mr. Barr. They were talking about putting regulations on regional banks and the regional banks did have a big reaction. So watch out for what happens this week with the stress test. That will be big, but unless there is a black swan here, I think we have a lot of room until any momentum shifts. We're going to want to see how we end up June. There might be a little bit of rebalancing, but I've been saying this a lot on stream, the move that we have had recently. This is what I mean by by you can move a lot even towards the end of the month and we'll, and moving forward because even if you drop another 10 to or 100 200 points on the SPX you're still going to be higher than where we were at the beginning of the year so until there is either a crazy Powell and a bunch of follow-up data you really got to knock through a lot of levels for things to start switching from this bullish momentum that we have seen all year so don't get too jumpy that's the moral of the story we could still move move up a lot and down a lot and realistically be at the place we've been and the end of the year and answering this narrative we need more evidence and we need to be able to answer questions ranging from inflation all the way down to earnings and even bonds in other countries too so it's gonna be exciting but those are the main keys chat and now let us get into the play. So right off the bat, since we made a lot of different videos last week and last week was a little bit slower, I had a couple plays that I made. We brought them up either on stream or we covered them afterwards. I did make two bigger plays and then there's one more play that I haven't made, but we've talked about it in the past. But I'll start with the first one, TRDA. This play is related to Sarepta and muscular dystrophy. If you actually go look at their stock too, they kind of have a inverse reaction reaction to Sarepta. So pretty much what happened, it was last week, I believe either Wednesday or Thursday, but Sarepta, they got a drug approval for their multiple sclerosis drug. It was very good, but surprisingly, even some analysts commented on it, they ended up selling off the next day. TRDA held up, but the last time Sarepta had like bad drug data, they went up off of it. But overall, it's a sympathy drug play. I thought it was pretty cheap. I was going for the flip. Pretty much Sarepta was halted. They got unhalted. There was a little bit of green but then they kind of did nothing. So going to be writing that one out this week. If I could close it out, I will. But hopefully we get some of the recovery just depending on how the market plays out. But that is play number one. Then play number two, Root. We were talking about this one with the buyout and I made the whole video about it. But remember, during the video, I could not get any of the shares. Well, we put in those orders at like 10 or $11 there. It ended up coming down. So I decided to go for it. I grabbed 1,000 shares at $11 and I'm going for a swing on this one. This is simply one of those buyout offer plays. So like I'm saying in that video, leave a little bit of cushion. The offer is $19. I think it could probably get bought up or hold out around 16 or 17. We need updates on the offer. The fact that it's trading lower, people might be doubting it. They have had offers in the past and the people who made the offer, that offer I believe was from July as well too or they've been at least making efforts since then so it really just depends how the market views it and any progression with this and that's why I'm saying we'll wait till there's updates on the offer but I'm down to hold it a little bit because if it does go through definitely a lot of upside and I think the downside is it goes back two three bucks but even on a thousand shares that's like two three thousand dollars of risk so keep that in mind that is play number two and then finally play number three three m 30 m three a lot of threes there but you 
you've seen this play. We talked about it in the past when they had that update on like the $10 billion lawsuit. Well, remember it came out, the stock went up, it went down. We finally heard on Friday that they did settle the deal or they like didn't claim liability and it wasn't like a full settlement, but they agreed to pay like $10 billion over 10 years. So it was a positive outcome. The stock had a pop, but then it came right back down. And I was saying this on stream, if it goes to like 100-ish, I think it's a good flip to go from like 100 to like 105 in between that range, especially playing any of this lawsuit news. So might try to go for the double dip. We talked about this one. And then even on Friday, I have old Lucid shares. That was another one I wanted to average down on. We were talking about if people get bullish and optimistic with the pause and momentum, then the small caps will start to rip. So either going to average down on Lucid or flip 3M. Those in the other plays I showed you, probably what I'm going to be focusing on this week. And then of course, the bonds and then hearing Powell and then seeing if anything changes, but it probably shouldn't until the data does, but maybe we do get a surprise and we'll see, but that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. I need you to remember you got to both love the discipline and know whatever is in your heart is always going to come out. So keep it filled up and keep it filled with good and positive thoughts and make it through the end of the year. Are you going to keep up the momentum or not? That is the question. And Chad, I know you're ready for it, baby. So let's get another good week. Welcome to the second half of the year, summer, all the good stuff. But Chad, I love you. I'll see you in the morning. And that's it. I'm not even going to be awkward, even though I got a weird flying ticker behind me. It's kind of cool, though, huh? Yeah. What's up, son? What's up? It's just mad outdated, though. It's, it's dated when I plug it in, though. Or it had like a Wi-Fi today. It's just I was on the go. I was in a rush. It just stopped. Okay. <laughs> Horn.